Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, I'm uploading something a little different. This is a deep dive into one of my favourite PlayStation 5 games, Astro's Playroom, and a look at the history of the Astro character himself. Originally, I uploaded this video on a second channel, but seeing as I decided not to continue making content over there, I wanted to share it with you all over here. If you enjoy the following video and you'd like to see me cover more non-horror games with these types of essay style videos, then let me know in the comments section below. With that said, sit back, relax and enjoy this retrospective of Astro's Playroom. The PlayStation 5 launched with an impressive software lineup, featuring a little something for everyone. From Demon's Souls to Spider-Man Miles Morales to Sackboy's Big Adventure, Sony attempted to cater to the varied tastes of players adopting their latest system. In addition to titles coming from Sony's first-party studios, third-party support in the form of games like Call of Duty, NBA 2K and Assassin's Creed helped round things out nicely. Oh, and who could forget the quirky shenanigans of Bug Snacks? However, there was one particular title that flew under the radar of many players. Surprisingly so, as it came bundled with each and every PlayStation 5 sold at retail. This game was Astro's Playroom, and in my opinion, was absolutely the best title from the PlayStation 5 launch lineup. What is this about this game that makes it such an essential experience, one that no PlayStation 5 owner should miss out on? Well, let's answer those questions as we take a look at why Astro was the killer app you may have missed. Released alongside the PS5 on November 12, 2020, Astro's Playroom was conceptualised by Sony and developer Japan Studio, now reformed as Team Asobi, as an elaborate tech demo to be packaged with each and every system. The idea was to create a short game to showcase the potential of the new DualSense controller. This was the first mainstream controller built around haptic feedback, as well as refining tech from generations past, such as motion controls and rumble. With the DualSense, Sony designed a controller where the player would feel sensations associated with a moment as it occurred in-game. The tension of a bowstring as they drew an arrow. The pitter-patter of rainfall on the surface of the gamepad while exploring during a downpour. Astro's Playroom achieved this goal, but also went far beyond its conception as a gimmick to demonstrate new hardware features. Astro embraced PlayStation's storied history, filling its vibrant world with nostalgia at every turn. On top of that, it was a fun platformer in its own right, packed full of nifty ideas, all of which are executed to perfection. As a total package, it leaves a mighty impression and, to this day, stands as one of the most memorable of Sony's launch titles. Before we take a closer look at the ins and outs of Astro's Playroom, let's begin by taking a walk down memory lane and recapping briefly the history behind one of PlayStation's more modern mascots. Astro's Playroom wasn't the first time Sony pre-installed a game on their systems at launch. In fact, Astrobot as a character was introduced to the world via the Playroom, a tech demo preloaded on the PlayStation 4 when it released in November of 2013. The Playroom was a much smaller and more contained experience than Astro's Playroom. It focused on showing off the features of the DualShock controller in tandem with the PlayStation camera. Players could put themselves directly into the game and even invite the little Astros out of their controllers and into the living room. 
While far less impressive than its modern iteration, the Playroom showcased Team Asobi's talent for creating fun, interactive experiences that leveraged Sony's gaming tech. It also gave us Astrobot, a cute and lovable robot who, over the years, would become a firm favourite within the PlayStation fanbase. Astrobot would next appear in the Playroom VR, a collection of six demos packaged with each and every PlayStation VR headset. Once again, these demos were both inventive and fun, with Team Asobi finding clever ways to utilise VR technology and giving players unique gameplay experiences set inside the Astrobot world. Players raved about one particular demo of the six, a 3D platformer in the style of games such as Mario 64 called Robots Rescue. It worked surprisingly well in virtual reality and led to many wishing for a full game that would expand on this concept. And so, in 2018, Sony released Astrobot Rescue Mission, a fully fleshed out version of Robots Rescue which launched to overwhelming positive critical and commercial reception. Now, with his own full-fledged game, albeit a VR one, Astrobot had cemented himself as a PlayStation mainstay, a mascot synonymous with the brand just as Crash Bandicoot had once been back in the PlayStation 1 era. It only made sense to continue the tradition of using Astrobot to complement the launch of new PlayStation hardware, and so Sony did exactly that when it came to launching their latest console, the PlayStation 5, and showcasing its particular set of unique features. So, what exactly is Astro's Playroom? Well, first and foremost, it's a 3D platformer that leverages the DualSense controller to enhance a tried and tested gameplay model over the course of its brief 4-5 hour runtime. And that runtime is assuming you wish to unlock everything Astro's Playroom has to offer. If you're simply looking to run through the game once and then set down your controller, you can halve that previous number. After completing a brief tutorial introducing the player to the new features of the DualSense controller, we are transported through a portal packed full of PlayStation history, eventually landing in a hub-like world full of our fellow bots. This arena is dubbed CPU Plaza and is set within the PlayStation 5 console. So think of these Astros as little gremlins in the machine. The hub is divided into four main stages, each represented by a piece of hardware. The cooling springs sets beyond the console fan. The system's memory bank grants us access to memory meadow. The graphics card a portal into GPU jungle. And finally, SSD Speedway is located, you guessed it, within the PlayStation 5's solid state drive. Each of these four stages is based around a certain time period in PlayStation history, and these are listed on screen now. But it doesn't stop there. The network connection holds a collection of time-based challenge runs, providing additional replay value after one clears the main game via worldwide leaderboard rankings. Some of the clear times on this leaderboard are quite frankly insane, so kudos to everyone featured in this footage. At the other side of a room you may have noticed a very retro looking site indeed, the original PlayStation from 1995. Accessing this portal takes us to the PlayStation Labo, a museum featuring every single piece of PlayStation related hardware ever created. These are affectionately titled artifacts, and yes I suppose many of them are relics of the past at this point. Avid gamers, especially the older members of my audience, will no doubt remember some of the more obscure peripherals Sony came up with over the years. Some were cool, while others were quite odd. And here is where Astro's Playroom really begins to shine, in its nostalgia, and the fun it has reveling in our gaming memories. Each of these artifacts are found throughout the four main stages, Collecting them up and transferring a once barren clinical looking room into a treasure trove of PlayStation collectibles is joyfully addictive. There's also a gacha machine which can be fed for coins collected up in each world in return for even more retro items. Each time we crunch a gacha ball, our trigger tenses and gives off a feeling of crushing something in our hands. It's surprisingly satisfying. 
The Labo also features two murals on its walls, which slowly fit together like a puzzle as new pieces are unlocked, painting a tapestry of historical art. Now let's travel back from the Labo to the CPU Plaza. By doing so, another one of the game's standout achievements can be witnessed. Near instant loading. There are no edits here. Travelling back and forward between any of Astro's stages takes less than 3 seconds, a feat achievable thanks to the PS5's ridiculously fast SSD drive. We can mess around in the plaza and collect additional coins, as well as getting used to various gameplay mechanics such as how to fire the bow and generally cause mischief with our fellow robots. Venturing downstairs reveals a basement area with a final locked portal which leads to something very cool. But more on that later. For now, with Astro's premise explained, let's take a detailed look at each of the four main stages and how they both utilise the DualSense controller in interesting ways, while also being home to a bevy of fantastic references to PlayStation game franchises both past and present. First up, Memory Meadow, a light and cloudy stage themed around the original PlayStation. This level begins in a lush meadow set above the clouds, before eventually leading Astro into the heart of a thunderstorm where a giant robot carries him to the stratosphere. The sense of scale is impressive and the journey taken quite fantastical. We see many throwbacks to Sony's first console. From the controller cables Astro tightropes across to the flowers themselves, each petal adorned with those familiar symbols. Memory cards even appear as tombstones in this throwback to the PS1 classic Medieval. Talking of franchise throwbacks, a number of references to classic PlayStation games and characters can be found throughout this stage. Flower, Ape Escape, Medieval, Death Stranding, Tearaway, Ico, Everybody's Golf VR, The Last Guardian, Heavy Rain, MLB The Show, Jumping Flash, Ace Combat, Ghost of Tsushima, Infamous, Siren, Doko Demo Isio, and the classic Ridge Racer. Now let's take a look at how the developers leveraged the DualSense to better immerse the player in Memory Meadow. Firstly, the environments give off some neat feedback dictated by ongoing weather conditions. For example, in this scene, Astro explores during a downpour and we feel that sensation of raindrops pitter-pattering across the surface of the controller. While in this sequence, after being sucked inside a tornado, a whirlwind effect is created between our palms. It's clever touches like this that make Astro's playroom feel so special. By blowing through the controller's microphone, we can part these clouds as if our breath is transcending the TV screen and entering into Astro's quirky little world. But the star of the show for Memory Meadow's use of DualSense comes when jumping into this bowling ball and rolling around an assault course full of deadly pitfalls. We use the touchpad to control the ball and guide it to the finish line. These controls are well implemented and allow for precise movement with a ball speed reacting to the motions of our fingertips. At the end of Memory Meadow, a fittingly retro boot-up theme plays out. This taken from the original, iconic PlayStation intro screen. Up next, the soaring heights of space itself as we rocket through SSD Speedway. The stage begins as Astro navigates a frantic neon-lit highway during rush hour. Flying cars and spaceships whiz by at breakneck speed. 
To get around, Astro uses hang gliders, which must be launched by pulling back on the touchpad and then quickly flicking forwards. This captures the sensation of catapulting the little robot right out of the controller. Then, to glide about, we tilt the DualSense in the desired direction. Personally, I found this mechanic the hardest to get the hang of. It doesn't quite feel in sync and can be a tad unresponsive. Eventually, we take a rocket into the stars and begin to explore space itself. It's while exploring this spacescape that one of the coolest controller gimmicks is employed. Astro collects up a minigun, and as we fire it, the right trigger rattles as if pulling back on the trigger of a real gun. Feeling feedback through the trigger is a game changer for a shoot 'em up, and such a simple yet effective implementation of haptics. Next, Astro leaps into a little jet ship to fly through asteroid fields, intergalactic caves, and futuristic spacecraft. We control this jet by pulling on the left and right trigger, each one controlling a separate engine. Then, use motion controls to guide the ship left or right, the triggers reverberating as the engines burn. This leads to a boss battle with a gun turret set inside an alien mothership. We must carefully avoid the gun turret's attacks while lighting bombs on fire with our thruster engines. This requires a bit of finesse and is actually one of the harder moments in the game. After vanquishing this mini-boss, we reach the end of the Speedway stage and are greeted by the PlayStation 2 menu theme as our reward. The Speedway stage is home to another collection of beloved characters and gaming references from PlayStation's past. These are Gravity Rush, Final Fantasy VII, Pain, Silent Hill 2, Ratchet and Clank, Killzone, Resistance Fall of Man, Vib Ribbon, Spider Man, Detroit Become Human, Devil May Cry, Little Big Planet, Wipeout, Farpoint, and Rezogun. Next stop, Cooling Springs, an idyllic beach resort which gives way to a spa and eventually a frozen lake, complete with Astro's throwing snowballs and building snowmen. This stage uses the dual sense to enhance its surf setting in both subtle and obvious ways. When pushing through this sandstorm kicked up by a giant fan at the far side of the beach, we feel the individual grains of sand coursing through our palms. When skating across the ice caps of a frigid flow zone, the dual sense gives off the feeling of ice meeting blade, heightening the perception of actually skating rather than just sliding about. These subtle touches extend to acts such as pulling cords from the heads of enemies or unsticking our fellow bots from piles of snow and sand. The game providing a feeling of tension through the controller which simulates the force required to complete such acts. More deliberate and obvious uses of Sony's new controller tech come into play when donning a literal frog suit. After jumping into this amphibious attire, we zip it by swiping up on the touch controller. To move the frog suit, we then use motion controls, tilting in the direction we wish to leap and then pulling the right trigger to jump. Haptic feedback in the triggers provides tension, allowing the player to decide how much force to apply to each jump. This all feels very natural and intuitive. Another clever use of a controller can be seen here. After clambering aboard a melting ice platform, we must blow into the controller's microphone, a whirlwind then billowing through the platform's propeller and sending it downstream. At the end of the Calling Springs, we then enter this area where a familiar sound and theme play out.
This is the PlayStation 3 menu and boot up theme, and all around this room we see the XMB menu system used on that console. A nice throwback, and we'll see many more as we continue through the game. Within the Calling Springs level, we come across many franchises from PlayStation history, lovingly recreated via cosplaying Astros. These are Concrete Genie, Loco Roco, God of War, Fat Princess, Metal Gear Solid, Until Dawn, Resident Evil, PlayStation Worlds VR, Puppeteer, Parappa the Rapper, and last but not least, Sly Cooper. Next, let's just move on to the GPU jungle and explore its tropical world. GPU Jungle is set in a lush rainforest, which leads up a cliff face to the icy peak of a distant mountain. This is the home of the PlayStation 4, and so we see many classic games from that era referenced here. Bloodborne, Dreams, Horizon Zero Dawn, Castlevania, Crash Bandicoot, Monster Hunter, The Last of Us, Uncharted, Patapon, Days Gone, The Order 1886, Demon's Souls, Tomb Raider, Legacy of Kane, Jack and Daxter, Shadow of the Colossus, Tekken, and Journey. One would be remiss not to mention the now famous theme song that plays in the background while exploring this jungle. A beautifully nerdy song all about the GPU or graphics processor unit. Let's take a listen. The dual sense is employed in a variety of cool and clever ways during this stage. The two most significant are found when using the monkey suit and the bow and arrow. The monkey suit is used twice during our GPU jungle adventure, allowing Astro to scale a vertical cliff face. We control the monkey's left and right hands with the L2 and R2 triggers, and must alternate between them to climb. The strength of the Robo Monkey's grip is dictated by how hard we squeeze said triggers. Pressing down too hard while climbing causes more fragile handholds to crumble in our grasp. To steer the monkey in the right direction, the player must tilt the controller. There are even moments where we must swing upward by spinning the controller around and around. So you might want some extra space while playing these segments, lest you accidentally whack a loved one sitting in close proximity. Accentuating further the feeling of climbing are the zip lines and crumbling rocks, both felt through vibration within the controller. The bow and arrow is the other unique gimmick for this stage. While aiming using the L2 button to fire, the trigger tenses with our draw. The more we pull back on the trigger, the stiffer it feels, mimicking the tension of the bowstring. The amount we pull back dictates how far the arrow will travel when it's eventually fired. This simple use of haptic feedback elevates the functionality of this weapon. It ends up feeling far more like a bow and arrow rather than just another way to shoot enemies as with 99% of other bows in video games. We even get to face off against a mini boss of sorts while using the bow and arrow. This ferocious bomb throwing dragon must be defeated by targeting explosives attached to its head. When we finally reach the summit of a great mountain towering above the jungle below, another familiar sound from PlayStation's past plays out.
This of course for boot up audio for the PlayStation 4. The console this final stage is themed around. And with that we have looked at all four of the main stages Astro's Playroom has to offer, and with it over two decades of PlayStation history. However, there is one final secret stage located in the lower level of the CPU Plaza, a stage that takes us back in time to 1994, and the inception of the original PlayStation. After booting up the demo disc, Astro encounters a ferocious Tyrannosaurus Rex with a very basic visual design. This model is based on a tech demo created by Sony to show off the capabilities of the original PlayStation console way back in 1994. The T-Rex was presented against a static black background and was controlled with the PlayStation's joypad. In fact, this tech demo was bundled with each and every PS1 during its original run giving a taste of the 32-bit graphics capabilities the system offered. In the first phase of this historical throwback boss battle, we must avoid PS1 game discs the T-Rex hurls toward our pint-sized hero, as well as leaping out of harm's way each time the dino leans in to chomp down. Each chomp sends out deadly shockwaves. The tech demo T-Rex will also spawn out enemy bots, which Astro must quickly dispatch before the platform becomes too crowded. When the T-Rex eventually tires, we can go in for the attack. After felling the mighty Rex, the second, far more challenging phase of this epic boss fight kicks in. The music and visuals modernise as the retro reptile is reconstructed with modern visuals and a host of additional attacks. These include the ability to breathe fire, shoot out laser beams from its eyes and fire a barrage of missiles from its mouth. This time our defensive measures get a little more inventive as Astro is prompted to collect up trophies and hurl them at the monster's eyes to stun it, before going in for the attack. This boss encounter showcases Astro's design philosophy perfectly, taking an iconic moment from PlayStation history and then incorporating it into the game in a fun way while simultaneously bringing it up to date so it can be enjoyed by players of all ages. So with that thought in mind, let's end this video with a mini review of Astro's Playroom and why I feel it is such an essential experience. Astro's Playroom is a game that focuses on what should really matter to all developers, gameplay. Team Asobi took on the challenge of creating something that would feel like a next generation experience, despite visually looking rather similar to its PS4 counterparts. The developers used new features found in the DualSense controller to create a true next gen gaming experience like no other. In 1996, legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto delivered Mario 64 to the world a game which took full advantage of the thumbstick on the, for its time, revolutionary Nintendo 64 controller, to create a game that felt like we were playing in a true 3D space. While very few games since have managed to take such a giant leap forth for the medium, Astro's Playroom and its gameplay built around haptic and motion-based control channels a similar energy. Every action within the game, whether it's slaying enemies, navigating treacherous terrain, or simply exploring during varying weather conditions, is felt directly through the controller. This elevates the entire game experience far beyond its roots as a simplistic, yet well-executed 3D platformer. 
The experience is further enhanced if you're a fan of PlayStation and its storied past in the game industry. From the many nods to games both past and present, to the artifact collecting, which reminds us of just how much hardware has come out of a company over the past 28 years, Astro's Playroom is a joyful walk down memory lane. The soundtrack by composer Kenneth C.M. Young is another highlight, featuring both vocal and instrumental compositions which run the gamut from calming to hectic. These tracks complement each level nicely, adding to the fun and mischievous vibe Astro exudes at every turn. And while the game's visuals aren't going to turn heads, they do still look nice. Team Asobi's assured art style is clean and really pops at a native 4K presentation and 60 frames per second refresh. And due to this high frame rate, Astro feels smooth as butter to control, a quality I personally hold at far greater importance than visual fidelity. Each stage has a distinct look and feel too, with great attention to the smaller details that bring Astro's world to life. Whether that be the tiny rubber ring that pops out when we dive into a pool of water, or the miniature crabs sweeping up sand on a beach. The quaint mannerisms of our fellow bots as they go about their business. Or simply how the very landscape itself is built from video game hardware. So much love and attention has been poured into these environments and it really brings them to life. Pacing is great too. A typical run through may only clock in at a few hours, but this really works in Astro's favour. Because stages are fairly short, it's allowed Team Asobi to make every second count, and rarely do we find repetition in its design. One moment we're swimming on a beach, the next skating across a frosty plain, then leaping around in a frog suit, before navigating river rapids on a melting ice cube. The action rarely falters, delivering many show-stopping set pieces along the way to spice things up. Levels are also fun to revisit, collecting up those nostalgic treasures becomes addictive, as do the time trial events for the more competitive players out there. My only minor quibble is that enemy variety is lacking, with only a handful in total, in addition to a few mini-bosses. Still, even if this content feels light when held to greater scrutiny, can anybody really complain when we consider that Astro's Playroom is a free pack-in with every console? While bigger games like Demon's Souls and Spider-Man were showcases for the PlayStation 5's graphical prowess, it was Astro's Playroom that kept me going back time and time again. A game that understood a new console generation should go beyond shiny graphics and deliver meaningful gameplay on a level not previously possible. After all, when boiled down to their core, aren't video games all about having fun? Astro absolutely delivers on that philosophy in a way few other games manage. So here's to the future of Astrobot, a PlayStation mascot who still understands what gaming is really all about. And with that, we come to the end of this video taking a look at the history of Astrobot and a deep dive look at Astro's Playroom. This video took me a long time to put together, so I do hope you enjoyed watching today. And if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.